that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secure he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are good free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine he will be oh will be forever mine he will be will be forever This next song will be Rise Up. Oh, 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 thank you, Lord, for this day. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable, are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believe, safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too long to be found. You're just asleep, and it's time to leave. Come on and rise up, take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, rise up, rise up, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. When he said your name, the thing that filled your veins, 
with more than blood. It's a kind of love that washed his sins away. Now the door is open wide, and the souls have been rolled aside. The old is gone, the light has come, so, so come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the graves like Lazarus? You're brand new. Power that couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up. Rise up. Oh, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. Ooh, he's giving us new resurrected hearts. Ooh, he's calling us to walk out of the dark. Ooh, he's giving us new resurrected hearts. Oh, come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? You're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up. Rise up. Oh, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise. Come on now, rise up, oh, rise up. Can we say that together? Come on, rise up. Let's rise up from all the hatred. Rise up out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, that's all we have to do. Rise up, have faith in him, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Good morning. Day. I feel as though we are lopsided here. My goodness, we're just like gonna tip over. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, welcome to worship. It is the second Sunday of Easter. We continue our 50-day celebration of the resurrection. And so welcome to worship today as we celebrate the good news of new life. <sighs> Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to stand as you are able as we have our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to save us from our sin. In the name of the risen Lord, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to love, live for others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us share peace with one another.
<laughs> Good morning. Do we have our young friends here? I see some are young friends. Are you ready? I have a story for today. It's the story that the big kids are going to hear a little bit later. Right? We're all big kids, right? The rest of us, yeah. <laughs> all right. This is the story of Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. The disciples were hiding in a house the night Jesus rose from the dead. They were afraid. Bam! They locked all the doors. Jesus came and stood by them. Huh, that seems strange, doesn't it? Peace be with you, he said. The disciples looked up in surprise. Jesus showed them his hands and his side so that they would know it was him. The disciples were very happy. Again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. God has sent me to you. Now, it, now it's your turn to go tell the rest of the world about me. Jesus breathed on them. <sighs> that sounds kind of weird too, huh? He breathed on them in a very special way. He said, with this breath, I will always be in your hearts, even when I am in heaven. You now have the power to do the things I've asked you to do. Thomas was the only disciple who wasn't there that night. When he got back, the others excitedly told him about Jesus' visit. Have you ever missed something like that? Like a really big deal? Yeah? And then everyone tells you about it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, someone was, Deacon Roger wasn't in the picture, and now he is. Thanks be to God. There we go. <laughs> I don't believe you, Thomas said. Huh, I'll believe when I can touch Jesus' wounds. A week later, Thomas and the other disciples were in the same house. Jesus came again and stood with them. Peace be with you, he said to them. Thomas Jesus commanded, come here, give me your hands, put your finger in the wounds in my, hand, in my hand, put your hand by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore, it's time for you to believe. Thomas's eyes popped. Oh. My Lord and my God, he exclaimed. Jesus answered him, you believe because I'm here with you and you've touched me. Think of those who believe even when you cannot see it for yourself. Huh. So my question for you is, um, have you seen God? Have you seen God? You, you haven't seen God, but you believe in God? Is, huh. Imagine that. Well, here's, here's another question. Can you see the wind? Can you see the wind? No? How? How can you tell there's wind if you can't see the wind? You can feel the wind, yeah? Can you see anything when it's windy to show you that it's windy? Yeah, what? What, Lucas? The trees blowing, yeah, right? Uh-huh, Sarah? Wind socks, oh, that's cool. Or wind chimes, you can hear the wind chimes, yeah. It's true. You can see the sail of the boat, that it's filled with air. Yeah. Well, I have a present for you that I got from our own courtyard. And do you know, they were in a place where there aren't trees like this. There aren't trees like this. So how did they get there? The, the wind blew them there, Pastor Owens? That's amazing. So what I want you to remember with this is that there are people in the world who will never see God but they will see what God does in you. Because of you, they will see that God loves them. So you always want to remember that how you act shows God's love. Okay? All right. So I'm going to give you these leaves to remind you. Okay? Fallon, do you want to come get them so you can pass them out to everyone?
<laughs> Just one leaf for you. Fallon, you can leave the rest. Um, take one for yourself and leave the rest on the pew, okay? Oh, there's just one more. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. All right. Can you all help me pray? Can you all help me pray before you go back to Kid Zone? All right. Can you all help us too? All right. Dear God, thank you for the wind and the leaves that show us the wind. Help us to be the leaves that show your love to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, friends. All right, you can go back to Kid Zone, okay? <laughs> Oh, we have a grandpa leaf keeper. <coughs> I like it. Oh. Good morning, good morning. Oh, I see Buddy and Henry are coming around with the welcome pads. Buddy, you have the harder task this morning, it seems. <laughs> All right, welcome to worship today. As I said earlier, Today is Easter. I know you all thought it was last week, but it's actually this week and next week and the week after because Easter continues for 50 days. So thank you for gathering us, uh, gathering with us today to celebrate new life, to celebrate the resurrection. Um, please fill out the welcome pads um, and hand them back to Buddy and to Henry as they come back around so that we can celebrate your presence with us today. Um, thank you to everyone who was a part of the church picnic yesterday and who brought food. We actually had um, an exorbitant amount of food. <laughs> and so please stay afterwards today for fellowship because um, the picnic actually just continues today with all the desserts. So please stay around for a little bit and share in one of those and, and uh, get to know someone else who is here. Next Sunday, there is a piano dedication um, so the, we will dedicate the piano at the 1030 service where we use the piano. And then we will also have a dedication concert next Sunday evening at 7 p.m. And so we invite you to come and be a part of that. Invite everyone you know. In fact, um, one thing that you could really do to help spread the news of that is um, if you are a Facebook user, go on Facebook and say you're coming. And then when we run the ad more people will see it, especially your friends. And they'll, of course, want to come if they see that you are coming, uh, because who doesn't want to hang out with you? Um, we will have some wonderful musicians here uh, that Sunday, including one of the musicians who was playing um, last week for the 11 o'clock worship on Easter. And then there will be a lovely reception to follow. So uh, please come and stick around afterwards as well. Um, we continue to feed our, uh, feed our community through loaves and fishes and then also making deliveries to school families. We are certainly glad to accept donations of food. Our focus item right now is pasta sauce. I saw a jar of pasta sauce, or a can of pasta sauce, which is perfect, sitting in the cart out there. Uh, so thank you to those of you who have brought those in. We are also looking for ho for folks to help with the after-school program, um, both in teaching the classes that um, happen earlier in the afternoon, and then from 4.30 to 5.30, uh, reading to kids and doing sight words with kids and doing basic math skills with kids. Um, we could really use your help, so please let me know if you would like to know more about that. And then the Spring Fling and Flower Mart is coming up on May 13th. And then the uh, indoor craft and flea market is on the 20th. Please plan to come and be a part of both. Uh, both will be joyous occasions to welcome our community to what happens here at the God is Love Church. All right. And now at this time, we will have our testimony song. And we're having a testimony song because throughout the Easter season, we will have testimonies each week. Now, 
I am giving the testimony today just to give you a um, flavor of what that might be like, but really any bit of your story that shows where God has entered into your story. Um, so if you would like to do that in the coming weeks, please just grab me after the service and let me know. You would be happy to do that. And um, it's brief, like two to five minutes maximum <laughs> um, for the testimony. So if you would like to do that, please speak with me after the service. But for now, we invite you to join us in singing Come and Listen. Come and listen, come to the waters that draw you, know and feel the Lord. Say it with me, come and listen. Come and listen, come to the waters that draw you, who are thirsty, come. Let me tell you what he, he has done for me. Let me tell you what he, he has done for me. He has done for you. Oh, thank you. He has done for us. Come and listen. Oh, Come and listen to what he's done. Said, come and listen. Oh, come and listen to what he's done. I said, come and listen. It's all you have to do. Come and listen to what he's done. Come and listen. Have faith in the Lord. Praise our God. He is good to us. Praise our God. For he is good. Let's say that together. Praise. Our God, our God, for he is good, for he is good. Praise our God, for he is good. I said praise our God, for he is good. He has done for me. He has done for you. Oh, he has done for us. He has done for us. He has done for us. Oh, beautiful. Well, I just wanted to tell you a story from long ago now in the year 2000 i was at the elca youth event um, which by the way is happening in just over a year again um, it was in st louis missouri and it was the last day and we had managed to get into uh is it the superdome there yeah, yeah the superdome for the closing worship service and uh, Donna was recording the whole thing. A woman named Donna, one of the moms, was recording the whole service, except she stopped recording when we said the Apostles' Creed. 
you all know the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> and it was like, oh, we do this every week in church. This is no big deal. <laughs> so she stopped the recording and just said the words. But we had been instructed to, um, to say the words um, starting very softly and then building in volume. And this was, you know, 25,000 people <laughs> saying the Apostles' Creed. Again, no big deal. And yet, um, it was a particular time in my life when things were changing and we were moving and I wasn't sure quite what life was going to look like. And I was saying goodbye to the people that I was on this trip with and moving to a new school. And in that moment of saying the Apostles' Creed um, and hearing the swell of everyone in that stadium say these incredibly familiar words, um, I saw in a way that I was not used to seeing, I saw the presence of God. Um, literally saw as like a bright light <laughs> shining in that space um, as I heard those familiar words. And it just gave me such hope um, at a time when I was so uncertain about life. And so I'm so grateful to that gathering and to those people who were with me on that day. Thank you. to the water's edge, all you who know and fear the Lord. Just come, come, come and listen. Come to the water's edge, all you who are thirsty, come. Oh, who are thirsty, come. Come and listen. Oh, come and listen to the Lord. Just come and listen. Have faith in the Lord, no matter what you're going through. Oh, he hears every word you say. Oh, it's just between you and the Lord. Oh, come and listen. Come. Come and listen, come to the water's edge, all you who know and fear the Lord, just come and listen to the Lord, oh, come and listen, come to the water's edge, all you who are thirsty, come, oh, who are thirsty, come. He has done for me. He has done for you. He's done for us. He has done for us. Amen. Good morning. A re reading from Peter's first letter. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the generousness of your faith being more precious than gold, that through the perishables is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Would you stand for the gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on the day, that the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other things, any other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and though believing you, may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, from the Gospel of John, it was Easter Sunday, if I interpret those words correctly. The disciples were gathered in a room in Jerusalem that was some familiar to them. But the doors were locked. For fear, John says, for fear of the Jews. Now we need to be careful with that. Truthfully, they were afraid of everybody. They were afraid of the Romans. They were afraid of the authorities of the temple version of Judaism in Jerusalem, they were afraid of those responsible for killing Jesus. 
But if you pay attention to the lessons that were read last Sunday, you know that they have already heard that Jesus was risen. But they were scared. With good reason. I promised I would say this this morning, so I'm going to say it. John talks about the Jews. Well, it's a reason for that. Christians and Jews, or Jewish Christians and Jews, had from the very beginning had a complex relationship because after all, Jesus was a Jew. Jesus' family were Jews. The disciples were all Jews. And yet they ran into trouble with one version of Judaism. By the time that the Gospel of John is written, the Romans have come in and destroyed Jerusalem. And the Christians pointed at the Jews and said, it's them. And the Jews pointed to the Christians and said, no, it's them. And so when John writes his Gospel about 80 or so AD, that that they did it, not us, business, ends up in the gospel. And so when John says they were afraid of the Jews, well, they were afraid of a certain version of the Jews. But they surely were scared to death of the Romans. Scared enough to be behind locked doors, even though they had been told even though they perhaps had witnessed that Jesus was risen from the dead, they were scared to death. And then behind locked doors, Jesus appears to them. Wow. Peace be with you, Jesus says. Really? Peace be with you. And then one more time he will say, peace be with you. The most important things that Jesus says on that evening behind locked doors is peace be with you. It'll be seven more days when Thomas finally shows up. And once again, Jesus appears and says to the disciples one more time, peace be with you. Jesus is the power of peace to those who would be his disciples. So about now, 50 years ago, I was in seminary and there came out a new version of the communion liturgy. And in that communion liturgy, we saw for the first time the possibility of congregations being asked to pass the peace. I grew up as a generation of those who were confronted with the reality of putting before congregations the passing of the peace. I'll never forget it. The first Sunday, I said, folks, we need to pass the peace. And they looked at me like a... What's wrong with this guy? And it was like that over and over and over again. I moved from one congregation to another and confronted exactly the same problem. We're going to pass the peace. Oh, no, we're not. And then I asked them, how about getting up out of your seats and passing the peace? Oh, no. People would come to me and say, Pastor, look, I'll pass the peace, but this moving around business just can't happen. <laughs> finally, finally, it seemed like it sunk in. And then somebody asked me, Pastor, can we hug? No. <laughs> Just pass the peace. <laughs> and be quiet. <laughs> it's been a long travel. 
And then we got to the point where people finally did. I mean, people pass the peace all the time, don't even think twice about it. And then along comes COVID. And we can't pass the peace. And you've seen all that that has meant here as we slowly, one Sunday after another, began to pass the peace until finally somebody said, look, this is nuts. We really need to pass the peace. Was it a Wednesday evening? No, it was Claudia. Yeah, it was Claudia. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Bless you, Claudia. The most important words on Easter Sunday from our Lord Jesus, our peace be with you. I must say that, that as I pass through a congregation, I will always look for somebody who seems like they really don't want to have the, pass, the peace passed to them. And find that person and pass the peace. And it's amazing the look on their face that changes. When somebody cares enough about them to say peace be with you that is the message of the christian family it is the message of our lord jesus it is the power of the christian family it is the power of the lord jesus you see the disciples were scared to death. Jesus said, the Father has sent me. And the Father sends you. There's no way in the world that's going to happen until they find peace in their lives. The peace of knowing the power of the risen Lord. That's what Easter's all about. I pray for you that you may know that peace at every moment of your life. I challenge you that you will pass that peace to everyone who you come to know. That Jesus is love, that God is love, and the power of that love, the power of that peace is a power that our world desperately needs to hear and desperately needs to know. And so to you this day and to all I have come to know in this place, may God give you peace. May God give you joy. May God give you faith today and forever. As you reflect on that word, I invite you to um, sing the next song, Breathe on Us, uh, very much a reflection of the story that we've heard, though something that I think we still avoid do doing during the sharing of the piece. Um, but certainly also consider uh, the gifts that you might make to this ministry that we share, that we might um, broaden our peace that we share with our community, with our neighborhoods, and with the world around us and tell the good news that God is love. There is a shaking that hearts awaken Fire is moving, forever changing lives There is a trembling, there is revival The sound of worship, so great and glorious Said Holy Spirit, hear
There is a shaking, let hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival in the sound of worship. So great and glorious. Said, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Almighty God, you so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And so on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit. Breathe on us your love and faith that we, like the disciples, might bear your love into this world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now I invite you to join in praying the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. For communion today, I invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers. You will first come to me. I'll be right in front of the baptismal font. Whichever side you are coming from, you come to me first uh, for the bread, which is the body of Christ. And then you can go to either side to receive um, the blood of Christ. Just remember to hold on to your wafer. So when you receive the wafer, hold on to it so that you're ready to dip it into either the red wine or white grape juice. The first cup you get to will be the red wine, the second one, white grape juice, both of which are the blood of Christ. Um, two other notes. One is to say that Pastor Myers will be here under uh, this, this screen right over here to pray with any who wish a time of personal prayer. Just tell him what you'd like to pray for and he will gladly pray with you.
And then finally to say that this is not Epiphany's table, it is not even a Lutheran table, it is the Lord's table. And all are welcome at this feast.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you're able for the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go forth into the world in peace. Rise again from the dead. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Cry out for justice. Love and serve our living Lord. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And now please sing with us, Hallelujah, we sing your praises.